welcome back to Let's Play Ocarina of Time. In the last video, I finally got Dampy's heart piece from his mini digging mini game. And now I'm ready to move on. Done here in the graveyard. At least until later. Actually, as long as I'm here. Uh, yeah, I am going to need one more bottle of bug yet. So, while I'm still thinking about it, ah! No, 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 don't you dare get away. Yeah, see what I, see what I mean? You scooped them up again. Providing you don't hear that chime, then once you do that, yeah, forget it, they're gone. You have to go back and get more from the original source. Why? Anyways. Okay. Now, so much for optional side quest. Well, not really side quests, but mini games and optional collectibles. And on with the main story of the game. In one of the previous videos, showed the guard at the gate up here, Zelda's letter. And he opened the doorway, the gate for me. And now that I know Saria's song, said opening, said pathway will no longer be one big dead end. So let's get going. On with the game. Tektites. Always ignoring. Not ignoring. Annoying. Especially in the early games where they hop around, jump around so often. Makes it hard to target and hit them sometimes. Yeah. Can't do anything up that way yet. Stay on this side of the path, otherwise, yeah, if you're standing on the other side of the pathway, you could easily get pushed overboard from him. Goody, Goron City, making their debut into Zelda lore, Zelda fandom, Gorons, who, at least up until Breath of the Wild, with, with that game's Gorons like Daruk, never really cared for Gorons up until then. I mean, take this game, for example, their debut into Zelda lore. Keeping in mind, Gorons are supposed to be like rock eaters, like that thing in Never Ending Story, if anybody watching this has seen that movie. Yeah, you get what he's saying? They're rock eaters, living in a mountain, complaining about a food shortage. Really? Dude, for your kind, there's food as far as the eye can see. Shut up and chow down. Stop your whining. Seriously. Then you have games like Minish Cap, where they're literally playing like Rocky Balboa with their food and boxing it. Apparently their mothers never told them about not playing with their food. Okay, that was a bad joke, but hopefully you get the idea. I don't care much for Gorons and Zelda. I'm sorry, Zelda fans. At least, at least not, again, at least not until Breath of the Wild and some of the Gorons of that game. Daruk, Bluto, by the way, Bluto, where's Popeye? Anyways, attempted comedy aside, yeah. Now, as for what to do here. Yeah, 
him, waiting for the messenger of the royal family. Combine this hint with what Impa told you earlier about how Zelda's lullaby is your connection, so to speak. So yeah, stand here and play Zelda's lullaby, even though there's no Triforce markers on the ground like there usually is when it's the place to play that song. Now, if you don't already have Saria's song, well, sorry to say you're going to have to leave here, go all the way back to the Lost Woods, learn it, and then come back here, because this is where you're going to need it, well, one of two times, the second time being much later in the game. Because right now, he's not very cheerful. Very grumpy. So, take out your ocarina and play Saria song to cheer him up. And once he's done dancing. Come on, dude, it wasn't that good. <clears throat> that song... Granted, I don't really care much for the Ocarina songs in general. Anyways, they're so short. I mean, I know, I know... One of the all-time Zelda fan favorites is the Ocarina song, the Song of Storms, but again... Yeah. Okay, dude. Yes, I know. You already said that. Granted, you are being Mr. Grumpy yet, but yeah. Big boss. Hey, this isn't Metal Gear, dude. Bracelet, Goron bracelet, power glove. It's gone by many names throughout the course of Zelda history, but it's basically the same purpose. It allows you to lift heavy things, or in this case, bombs. In this game. Now, you can also optionally light a Deku stick there. Use it to light the torches out here. Step one and getting another heart. Now, before attempting step two of getting that heart piece, now that I have the power for the Goron bracelet. Pull some of these bombs out of here. And open that up. Very convenient shortcut, potentially speaking. Back to the Lost Woods. Especially being at this point in the game, if you die and start if you die on the world map, you start back at your house in Kokiri Forest. Now that this shortcut is open, that won't be that big a deal. Just go back to the Lost Woods, find your way here. Or if you save your game and turn power off, likewise, you start at your house back in Kokiri Forest. So at least for now, this can, potentially speaking, be a very useful shortcut. Instead of having to go all the way back out at the Hyrule Field, cut all the way through Cape Rico Village, and up there, yeah, you get the idea. Drastic time saver. Anyways, as for this, 
this can be rather annoying as it's basically a bomb equivalent of basketball except for the statue has to be facing a specific direction either when you score the basket or when it explodes one of the two I don't re I don't even know exactly how the mechanics work from a game programming standpoint I mean you know it can be very annoying Especially when you throw it the wrong way. I mean, with the mechanics of all this, you think it'd be just, you know, think it'd be enough just to score a basket, so to speak. Just that in and of itself would be enough to get the hard piece, but no. I mean, theoretically, you can wait until later when you have the bomb bag and you carry your own bombs, making this a little more easier, theoretically speaking. The problem I have with doing that is there, you have limited quantity. If you run out of bombs, then what? Here, this thing always respawns infinite attempts. So, you know, just a little bit more annoying, but still. At least you can keep trying over and over again until you actually get the heart piece or give up in frustration, whichever happens first. What? I hate you. You stink. You suck. Okay, that one, that one was on me. I only have myself to blame for that one. Okay, come on, be the heart piece. That'd be too convenient. I haven't played this long enough. I mean, I don't think that has anything to do with it. I'm just being sarcastic. Again, from a programming strategy guide standpoint, I don't know exactly how this works. I just keep trying until it... Yeah, like right now. I just keep trying until I get the hard piece. Alright, and that's about all there is to do in Goron City for now. Again, like all the all of these locations we've been to, we will be back here again numerous times through the rest of the game. so to speak and blow that up now again Gorons are supposed to be rock eaters why didn't the Goron that's down there right by where that rock that I just blew up was setting why didn't that Goron down there just eat that thing I mean it would have been his din din anyways I missed. Potentially speaking, if you do that right, you can glitch your way up on that upper level up there. Or you can clearly see there's a heart piece. If you do that drop right, you can get that heart piece right now. But I'm not going to do that. Even if I did do it right and landed on the right spot, I'd still just drop down. Again, like that heart piece back in Cake Rico Village. I don't want to hear people complaining in the forums about how I cheated to get heart pieces before you're supposed to be able to, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear that through the entire playthrough, so...
last time I'll need bottled bugs for quite some time. I mean, oh, you sleep. I mean, there will be two more sculptures I can get from Soil Squares using bottled bugs, but I won't have access to those locations for quite some time yet. Anyways, if you haven't already, swapped out your wooden Deku shield for that one, now might be a good time to do so. The second dungeon of the game. And obviously fire theme. Lava all over the place. No kidding, Navi. Really? Gee, where would we be without your keen powers of observation? She tells you this only after you not only saw it in the intro cutscene, but saw it while walking out here. Gee, really, Nav. Oh, never mind, you get the idea. clearly see that there's a switch up there, but you can't pull yourself up there and hit that, at least not from here. Would be a major time saver if you could just pull yourself up on this ledge and get up there and hit that switch now, from here. Well, not too big of a time saver, thinking about it only like a few minutes, but still. Wouldn't even have to bother with the next series of rooms. Since this whole stretch is just, just the in-game way of getting up there to hit that switch. Oh well. Actually, wait a minute. I don't want any. Okay, come here. Come here. That's right, follow me. Oh no. Ah, you dirty. Come on. There you go. Otherwise, I would have had to wait until I had my own bombs to open this up. Not that it really matters, as it's just an optional Skulltula token anyway, but still. on the switch. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hopefully there hasn't been too many people playing this game that had a problem figuring this one out. I mean, yeah, if you've never played any Zelda game before, I guess I could see how this could be a little confusing, but... Yeah. If you've played, you know, some of the other Zelda games, 
Hopefully this puzzle was rather self-explanatory. Howard, where are you going? Get back here. Please, pretty rat. Take that. gonna need a deku stick for this room and if you don't have any if you use like if you've been using them for sword substitute since they do more damage you can buy some from him at his outrageous price of one stick for 15 rupees Could fight these guys, but nah. nobody says you have to defeat every enemy you see in the Zelda game. I mean, in the NES original first Zelda game, that was the puzzle solution for a lot of puzzles. Defeat all enemies in the room. Only then will the door to the next room be open. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, we could have just got up here and stepped on that switch earlier. This is unlocked. Another puzzle 
that I truly hope there weren't too many people that ever had a problem with this one. I mean, I don't want to sound like an a-hole here and forgive me if I come off as one, but I mean, how obvious do they need to make this? I mean, you have a row of bombs on either side of this pillar, a one conspicuous blank spot right in the middle. Again, I seriously hope nobody in 1998 or all these years later has ever had a problem figuring out this puzzle. That's how we get up to the second floor. Of course, that having been said, well, you can't really see it from here or too far away, but there is a little, little opening up there that we now can no longer get to since we lowered the height of this platform. And there's a sculpture up there that you can kind of see vaguely. But that's okay, because even if we could get up there into that little opening there and hit that Skulltula, it's another one of those where you need the boomerang to be able to collect the token it leaves behind, so killing the skull, yeah, you get the idea. Like the one in Kakariko Graveyard, the two in Lon Lon Ranch. The one in Gerudo Valley. So once we get the boomerang, And for getting this one, it might be a good idea to get rid of that first. I mean, it's probably not necessary, but it works hurt. Okay, drop. There you go. So otherwise, he hits you and sends you falling down. Oh, fire keys. Ow! Oh shoot, by the way, that's right, I was pointing that out, but then got sidetracked by other things. Like I was saying before entering this place, if you hadn't already, now would be a good time to swap out your wooden Deku shield for the steel Hylian one. And what just happened being the reason why we're entering a fire-themed dungeon. The wooden one, if I was still equipped with that, just now would have burnt away, leaving me shieldless. Yeah. Okay, open the door. There you go. Now we're back to the main entrance room, just on an upper level of it. In fact, down there to my right is the main door, main entrance exit from this place. Oh, this room? Okay. Blade traps. Common obstacle in Zelda games from the beginning. Out optionally. Oh, not that far. No, I can't get back to it. There's a little recovery heart back there. Yeah. Granted, it's not too ultra important, just one little recovery heart, but that. Now I'll get up here. Open this for 20 rupees if you want to. You don't have to, obviously. But... this. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. I swear they recoded this in this version of the game, making it much easier to land that bomb on that little narrow ledge. 
in the N64 original, at least in my experience, that was virtually impossible. Well, not impossible. It could happen, but yeah, very, very seldomly. It was more a matter of timing, uh, of timing, getting it to explode as it's in the near vicinity of that boulder, not just getting it to set up there and wait until it explodes. <laughs> Just one of the many tweaks, or well, maybe not many, but one of the tweaks they made to this game for this version of it. Then again, I might just be imagining things I don't know. Oh, goody. Or these guys. Come here. Gotcha that time, buddy. Where are you going? Get back here. Come on, you coward. Are you a lizard or are you a chicken? Get back here. Fine. out there if you're gonna go get those two heart pieces or heart pieces, recovery hearts that are out there be very very careful as you can now see the outline of the room we were just in where we fought the first pair of Lizelle foals on the first floor one false move in doing this and you can easily end up back down there and have to backtrack your way up here Man. and that could be very annoying all right, now then. No, not that way. Hey, where's the other door? Oh, there. Okay, well, this one. They get a little bit more devious. A little bit, not too much, but whereas the last one was just well I actually hit the damn thing. And then go here. There's one more in this little Now we can go. And go get the dungeon item. The bomb bag. We can now carry our own bombs. Don't have to rely on bomb flowers. By the way, that description is just downright repulsive and disgusting. You have found a bomb bag. This bomb holding bag is made from a Dodongo stomach. Gee, thanks, game. How do you say that? Too much info? So you're telling me this was... Uh, I don't think I want it anymore. Take it back. Made from a Dodongo stomach linings. Uh. Oh well. Fine. Gonna need it anyway, I guess. Of course, now we have a shortcut back up here to the second floor, which if you want, if you're going to get that Skulltula token in that room back there that I mentioned, you're going to need this lift to get up to the second floor without lowering that pedestal pillar. Once you get the boomerang, anyways. But for now... Get 
said. Yeah, okay. Dodge. Technically, you could also put the bombs in from down here. Yeah, that would work too. The final stretch of the dungeon. Okay, where are you? The music playing tells me you're close by, but I don't see. There you are. Okay. Oh, you sneaky little... I ought to kill you for that, but I won't. Hey! Is that the same one that just... from this dungeon, at least for now. here and optionally speaking go back and everything is respawned no that's not what I wanted to do ah, wrong button ah crud -ola. try that again not what I had in mind Since I don't have any, since I won't need bottled bugs for quite a while now. Yeah. Revive you to full health, regardless of how many heart containers you have. I mean, it's been customary in Zelda since a link to the past that a fairy in a bottle will revive you like life in. <coughs> well, never mind. I was going to say like life insurance, but that's not exactly the right, the right analogy there, but yeah. But in you, usually it's only like five or six hearts. Here, for whatever reason, 20 if you have all 20 heart containers. Which again is why I usually don't even worry about potions in this game. Just fill my empty bottles full of captured fairies. Or, of course, that sounds kind of mean. You're capturing these poor things and putting them in bottles. Some hero I turned out to be... Anyways, now. Oh, then I. Oh, yeah, okay. It's, uh, never mind. It's down there, anyways. I need to use my. By the way, I got my control set up right now. Anyway, I need to use my mouse to hit that. Oh, no, you don't. Come here, you. Where's the other one? I know there's at least one more of those damn things. I think, that, I think there's only two of them. Of 
push it the rest of the way. down for boss battle. Okay, who are we fighting this time? As if I don't already know. And another Zelda 1 throwback boss. Dodongo! That shield will be mangled beyond use. Of course, I give you way too much maneuver space there. You can easily just walk around him. Okay, what's with this? Bosses are supposed to get more difficult as the game goes on, not easier. He dies in four hits. Even with the Deku Stick jump attack, Queen Goma took more hits than that. Again, bosses are supposed to get more difficult as the game goes along, not easier. But then again, it's the Dongo. In my opinion, there never has, in the entirety of Zelda history, whether it's official games like this or those random, or not random, but fan, homebrew, fan hack, Zelda classic fan games. Either way, nobody, and I do mean nobody, has ever been able to make a difficult Dodongo boss battle, in my opinion. Just something about the word Dodongo. Might as well be the dish dictionary definition for easy boss battle. Well, okay, I jest with that, but you get the idea. Hopefully. And the most trouble I've ever had with a Dodongo boss battle would be Oc not Oc the Oracle of Seasons, where you had to lift him up using the power bracelet and throw him onto that bed of spikes to damage him. Nero was just figuring that part out because usually you just throw bombs in his face and hit him with your sword once you do. In that game they actually threw a twist into it. But once I figured that out, then still back to the idea that Dodongo equals easy boss battle. Anyways, yeah, that's two dungeons down. What are you doing? Oh, it's another one of those spiritual stone things. Whoa! Again, look at the size of that ruby. Damn, Link is getting rich on this quest. 
first in Emerald, now a Ruby. Yes, I know, I know. That's not the purpose of these things. I know that, but still. Oh, good God, that's right. This game and its great fairy designs. Oh, yay. I forgot all about that. Before I go up there, now that I actually have bombs, I don't have to worry about bomb flower bombs. This. Here in this version of the game, they actually made that look climbable. In the N64 original, it looked no different than either of the side walls did. So you really couldn't tell if you could climb it or if you had to wait until you had the boomerang to get this one. City could open this up, but nah. just a purple rupee, 50 bucks. I'll save that for later. Here again, now that I have bombs, I don't have to worry about bomb flowers get over here. Granted, technically speaking, if you really want to be literal, I could have gotten over there earlier, make like a circus trapeze tightrope artist and walk over there that way. Could have done that, yes, but it would have been delaying the inevitable. Once you get over here, you're going to need bombs anyways. Would have just wasted your time getting over here that way. Unfortunately, this one is also a purple rupee, 50 bucks. But I only have 27 rupees left of wallet space, meaning 23 of this is going to go wasted. Technically, I could wait until later once I buy something. And, but, like, I'm going to come all the way back over here at that point just to get this, so. In this room, going this way, there is something else, but eventually you'll come to boulders that bombs won't destroy. That's something for later in the game. Need an item you'll get then to make your way to the to the item on that side of the room. Now, 
There he is. The person I was just looking for. Okay. Wait for him to get back around again. Pretty much need bombs for this. I mean, yes, theoretically you can use the bomb flowers there. But from the time you pick them out, there's no way you'd better make it all the way back here with them before they explode. So that idea is kind of... Yeah. Not going to work for this. Oh shoot, I think I did that too soon. I mean, from a gameplay standpoint, it makes sense that you can't do this before having bombs, since the price for doing this is an extension to the bomb bag that you wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah. How can you get an item? I mean, uh, let me rephrase that. How can you get a good? How could you get an upgrade for an item that you don't even have the original of yet? Yeah. So again, for that reason, it makes sense that they don't let you do that before having bombs. Or having the bomb bag, to be specific. Anyways, that's all for Goron City for now. We make our way up to the summit of Death Mountain. Now that we can, since we have bombs now. to drop it not throw it wrong right button but threw it at the wrong or pressed it at the wrong time oh that was close enough picky 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 game okay well unlike that one in Goron or Dodongo's Cavern, where, like I said, in this version of the game, it seems more likely that the bomb will land on that little ledge, making it much easier. Here, they didn't bother doing that. Here, even in this version of the game, it's still a matter of timing. Move! How did that... What's your cow doing all the way up... Damn you, video game logic. How did a cow get in here? Seriously, explain. Better yet, never mind, I don't want to know. Gameplay-wise, this is obviously for, like I've pointed out in one of the previous videos, if you have Epona song, you can play it to the cows for an empty, for extra milk in one of your empty bottles. Obviously, that's why he's here now. But storyline wise, again, how did he get all the way up here and down, or she, whatever? You know? And here we go again. Tis Zelda, this is Zelda, Tis Zelda tradition. Seems like every single game, at least once, rocks falling on your head.
you've been breath of the wild the first time you make your way to Goron City of that game. Pass from Southern Mines to Goron City the first time through that game. And again, just like with the Dodongo battle earlier, that shield would be mincemeat, and so would I for that matter by now. Again, whoever said video games were realistic probably has never played too many of them. Okay, game. This is getting a little redundant. Once or twice, fine. His Zelda tradition, like I said. Zelda's lullaby. And now... The questionable artwork for the great fairies in this game. Seriously? What made them think this was... <laughs> Seriously? And this is a Nintendo game. Really? So much for the family-friendly reputation. Never mind, just suffice to say, I mean, wasn't this game rated E for everyone or whatever, no, rated very lightly by the ESRB? Obviously, they never saw this. Anyways, you now have a magic meter. In this game, it can be useful, but you're probably not going to be using it all that often. Not like the next game, Majora's Mask. Or even the Master Quest version of this game, for that matter. And now, optionally... Granted, technically, you're probably not meant to be here yet, but if the developers didn't want you here yet, they would have bordered this area off somehow. So. Now, how much time you have on that timer, I think, is based on A, how many heart containers you have in total, and B, if you're at full health or nearly dead or... I think. Anyways. Oh. Oh. Now, it might be quicker to glitch your way out. Well, I don't know if it's really technically a glitch, but just intentionally drop into the lava 
and end up back where you started, back at the entrance. Whereas if you actually do run out of time here, you will die and get the game over screen, or in my case, use my bottle very. Now, hello. This can be quite useful. I mean, not just because it gives you a ride back to the village, it's what, just at the base of the mountain. But where specifically in the village he drops you off at is what makes this potentially can be very useful and convenient. Oh shoot, well actually that was intentional. Drops you off on the roof of this house, where as I mentioned earlier, there's a heart piece in there. But of course I intentionally fell off because I wanted to visually prove that for whatever reason, and I think this might be the, one of the reasons they programmed it this way in fact, for this very purpose, Whatever, wherever there are no day-night transitions. Play the sun song, and along with turning night into day or vice versa, it brings you back to where you entered that screen from. Yeah. I don't know, I can't say for sure, but my guess would be this would be one of the play, one of the reasons they programmed it that way. This you know, one of the few places where it's actually useful. Or if you accidentally did that and then realized, hey, I could have got that heart piece now. Oops! You'd have to go all the way back up to the summit. And actually, I don't know if that owl would even still be there when you got back up there. Oh. Otherwise, you'd have to wait until you get the hook shot much later. to get this. Alright. Okay, I think that's where I call it for tonight. See you next time. Bye for now, and as always, thanks for watching.